Woohoo! Today we're talking about my backpack. My backpack. What's going on, hikers? In today's video, we're doing another top 10 FAQ, frequently asked questions about a specific piece of gear. The last one that I completed was about the Aegis Max sleeping bag, and today we are talking about the Osprey Atmos 65 liter backpack. If you're new to the channel, my name is Jeremiah Stringer, and here we talk about all things hiking and backpacking. So if you're into that kind of thing, you might as well subscribe to the channel because that's exactly what this channel is all about. I actually took this backpack on two through hikes. One, the Foothills Trail, which is about 75-ish miles, give or take. And then I took it on the Vermont Long Trail, which is over 300 miles, and it took me, you know, like three weeks to complete, four weeks if you count travel and zeros that I took. So I have over 500 miles on this backpack, and I think, it's time, it's time, let's answer some questions about it. So I have 10 questions for you today that I found on like, you know, amazon.com, I found on REI, just looking through and seeing what are people wanting to know about the pack. So hopefully I'm gonna accurately answer those questions for you and give a little bit of my opinion on the pack. So before we get into the specifics, um, I will tell you, I'm not gonna go over all the technical specifications. So if you wanna check that out, I'll leave it in the description below. I'll leave a link and you can read about the backpack. This is gonna be more of like a Q&A. Now that is an affiliate link. So if you click through it, I do get uh, a little bit of commission off of it. So if you wanna help the channel, feel free to click through the link. So let's start off with a few technical specs and then we'll hop into the questions. First of all, this backpack weighs four and a half pounds. And if you take off the brain, that is like the detachable lid, it will take off approximately six-ish ounces. And I actually pretty much never hike with the lid on my backpack. Um, it also takes off 10 liters of um, backpack capacity. So this is like a 65 liter pack. Without the lid, you're losing 10 liters. I don't know if that was actually 10 liters or not, but I don't think that for my preferences, I really need it. A technical uh, aspect number two, it is not waterproof. Um, this bag, if you get it wet, if you submerge it, it is going to <laughs> soak everything inside. So what I do to combat that is I just use like a compactor bag. I go with the white trash bag or a white compactor bag because it's easier to see in there. If you use one of the, ba uh, the black trash bags, then it kind of absorbs all the light and it's really hard to find what you're looking for. So. If you are gonna try to waterproof it, just use you know a compactor bag and that'll probably help you out um, more than you would know. Next up, um, it does have an adjustable torso lens. So it actually comes in a number of different sizes and they're slightly different capacities and slightly different weights, but all around 65 liters and all around about four and a half pounds. Uh, but you do have an adjustable torso lens. So whenever you put it on, it's got like little hooks in there and you hook your fingers and you slide it up and down. Now, once you get it to kind of the perfect torso length, you don't really have to play with it anymore, but I highly suggest that you just go into a local backpacking retailer and have them to um, put on one of those Osprey like backpack measurement tools that they put on your back and then they fill your spine. It's kind of odd, but they know exactly what size backpack you need. So this video is not gonna tell you which size you need. I would suggest going into the store and checking that out for yourself. So question number one. Is the cover for this backpack included? I mean, it's not waterproof. So this is simply yes or no, and no, it is not included. And, you know, I wish Osprey would contact me and sponsor this video, they're not. But if they did, I would say, Osprey, come on, man. I'm already paying, you know, two or three hundred dollars for the backpack. At least you could do is throw me a bone and give me the cover with it. So I checked on the price on the cover. Last time I checked, they're thirty-seven dollars. And in my opinion, you don't even need the cover to help rainproof the backpack because you could just use a bag inside. You know, like I said earlier, a compactor bag. Now, if you are going to go for the cover that goes over the backpack while you're wearing it. Keep in mind, your back is still, you know, back here. This is still, you know, technically uncovered. So you're going to get water down and it's going to kind of seep through. So just keep that in mind. All right, let's go on to question number two. Is the squeak eliminated? <laughs> so you're probably like, what is this squeak? If you don't own one of these backpacks, they are notorious for whenever you put it on, you're actually walking, you get a little squeak, squeak, squeak. And you're like, what in the world is it? That's freaking driving me crazy. 
And what it is is um, there's friction in there and there's a little bit of fibers rubbing together in the fabric. So the hip belt, it kind of gives you a hug and that puts tension on those fibers and that friction makes it squeak a little bit. So my answer is they didn't resolve this problem. Mine doesn't squeak, but I actually had a buddy, Kevin, he had the same backpack and he returned it to REI for a full refund because he was like, I can't deal with this. Now the alternative is if you buy one and it does squeak, it's not that big of a deal. You can send it back to Osprey and they have a great warranty on all their products. So keep that in mind if that does happen to you and you purchase this backpack. Question number three, can you close the hip belts with one hand? Uh, sometimes this can be a nightmare and I do love this backpack and this really, really isn't a review. It's more of like, uh, you know, a little bit of information on it, but you can close the hip belt pockets with one hand, but it's very difficult and you gotta, you, you have to kind of do the old, like, let me hold it with this finger and then scoot it a little bit with, you know, my thumb and my index finger and scoot, 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 and you get it closed. But it's much easier if you use two hands. I don't like doing that because if I'm using trekking poles, then I have to tuck my trekking poles, you know, up under my arm to zip it back. Small inconvenience, but if you're out there for multiple weeks in a row, it gets on your nerves a little bit. So just keep that in mind as well. Question number four, is the hydration pack removable? Well, if you don't know what a hydration pack is, basically that's like a water bladder. You fill it up and then a tube runs from inside the backpack where the hydration bladder goes to the outside and then you can drink it. Um, through that tube, of course, through a mouthpiece. Now this backpack does come with a sleeve. It does not come with the bladder. So maybe you could buy like a platypus bladder if you're into that. I'm not, I use smart water bottles. But anyway, you stick the, the bladder into the sleeve and then I'll tell you why I don't like it. I don't know if you care about this, but if you do, the reason I don't like it is I don't know how much water I have left. And it's really hard to, whenever I refill the bladder, to stick it back in that sleeve. You know, there is no, let me unzip the side on this backpack and slide the water bladder in. You gotta kinda unpack it a little bit and slide it back in there, just inconvenient. So the water bladder is removable and there is a sleeve for it, but it's a little bit of a pain. My wife still does it though. All right, let's go on to our next question, question number five. Can this be used as a carry-on backpack on a flight? And you may be like, why would anybody even ask that? Well, I'll tell you why. Whenever I was through hiking, I flew from Nashville to Providence, Rhode Island. And whenever I was taking that flight, I was like, how am I gonna get this backpack and all this stuff to the place where I'm hiking? So if you're wondering about, can I just carry this onto the plane? No, this backpack's a little bit too large and doesn't normally fit the dimensions on a specific airline. Now, if you wanna know in further detail, you know, check out whichever airline you're flying with. Um, I don't remember who I flew with, but what I did was I actually took this and checked it, but I put it inside of another luggage. And basically I went to Goodwill and I bought some, I bought like one piece of luggage for a few bucks. And then I threw that away whenever I, I touched down and put my backpack on in Providence. So that way, if my backpack was damaged during the flight, then the airline would cover everything inside the luggage. So just a little hack for you. I think I learned that one from Dixie talking about her through hiking experience. So question number six, will a bear canister fit inside of this backpack? Well, technically, yes, it will, but it's gonna take up a lot of room. Um, a lot of people were asking about if I unzip the sleeping bag compartment, which is at the bottom of the backpack, it's kind of divided into like a third for the sleeping bag and then the rest of the backpack, just one big kind of open sleeve. Um, you could stick a bear vault down in there if you're going somewhere, but I would suggest, you know, if you're going somewhere that you have to use a bear canister, I would put it on probably on top above, you know, my head around here, but I don't know, that could be annoying too. So, you know, keep in mind, it will fit technically, but then all your other stuff may not fit too. So something to consider, you may have to strap it to the outside. Unless you use a small bear canister, then you could probably fit all your stuff in there depending on what size gear you have. You know, backpack and it's specialized to every individual. That's what's so great about it. Go on to question number seven. I already hit on this a little bit, but what is the bag's capacity with and without the lid? Now with the lid, the bag capacity is 65 liters. 
you know, every backpacking company, these are mass produced since it's Osprey, but they all have like their different standard units of measurement and they don't really match up. So Osprey says 65 liters. And if you take off the brain, it's 55 liters. But if you compare that to other brands, sometimes those don't equate. So you kind of got to get your hands on it and try to stuff your, um, your own gear into it. So again, I would suggest checking it out retail. Go into an REI or your local backpacking store, outdoor store, get your hands on it and get a feel of what it actually, what would actually fit inside of it. Question number eight. What is the weight load limit on this backpack? In other words, how much weight can I fit inside of it? I, <laughs> whenever I was through hiking, I always bought too much food and my backpack was always way too heavy leaving town. So, I tried to have a base weight of less than 20 pounds for the backpack. That way, whenever I bought all this food, I could you know, fit it inside and it wouldn't be hurting as the backpack was sitting on me. So I would suggest keeping this under 35 pounds unless you wanna be uncomfortable. Now the website says 50 pounds is max load. But that capacity is way too high in my opinion, for me anyway. I mean, like I said, it's specialized for every individual's needs, but it's not gonna be very comfortable, I'll tell you, because whenever you're wearing the backpack, it, it kind of pushes down here and it hurts my lower back, just like the pressure of where it's giving me that tight, nice Osprey hug. 30, over 35 pounds, I just, I don't like it. Don't like it at all. Let's go to question number nine. This is a really popular question. Does the lid turn into a day pack? So when you take off that removable brain, does it turn into a day pack? No, I mean, technically you could use it as a day pack, but you'd have to carry it. It doesn't have any buckles that would strap together or anything like that. It, it, some Ospreys and some other backpacks, their, their lids do, and you can kind of wear them as like a little backpack. So what I do is if I got to set up base camp and then I want to go around and hike a little more during the day or something, I'll just empty out the bag completely and wear it. Still comfortable. It jumps around a little bit without any weight in it, but the, the lid is definitely not a day pack. Question number 10. Are there little straps on the bottom of this backpack where I can, you know, strap my tent to it or maybe a sleeping pad or something like that? Indeed, there is. You are in luck. This has the little straps. They are completely adjustable and you could fit like a massive tent hanging off the back of this thing. I've actually seen it done. If you have any other questions or if you want to suggest a gear video that I could do a top 10 on, comment it below. Tell me what you think about this backpack and give me those suggestions. If you enjoyed, give me one of these, like the video, subscribe, and kick the notification bell for the latest notifications. We'll see you in the next video.